Hey guys, Daily Tech here with a follow-up video to my video series for the quest to find the perfect head tracking using the PS Move service. Many people, including myself, have been waiting for this to come out and Hipster Sloth has delivered. So now that it's here, let's go see how we get it set up. If this is your first time visiting my channel and you enjoy all different types of custom VR, be sure to subscribe now so you don't miss anything else in the future. In this new edition of the PS Move service, it eliminates the need to use a third PS Move controller for head tracking. So now, instead of using a controller like this, you could just use your own custom made head marker like this. If you want to see how I made this custom head marker, be sure to check the card in the top right of your screen. I got a full build video in the third part of my quest for perfect head tracking. Now the reason why this works is because all you're doing is tracking the position of where you are in the room. You're not tracking any kind of orientation or rotational data. Now that all this is in place, it's going to save you from having to buy another controller just to get head tracking. And since the controllers are really not all that cheap, it's going to be a pretty significant cost savings. So if you're looking to only play racing games or flight sims or something like that and all you need is head tracking, then it's going to cost you very little because you only need to get two cameras and one of these. And when each camera is only about five or six bucks and this cost me less than $10 to put together, there's a good chance you can get the whole thing done for about 20 bucks. Now the only catch to this right now is that you still need one controller to get the calibration done. You don't need it permanently, it's only to get the setup done. So if you have a friend that has a controller that you can borrow for a day, or if you know a local shop or a big box store that you can borrow a controller from, because once you've done the calibration, everything stays completely fine, unless of course you move a camera around. So let's head over to the PC and see how we get this whole thing configured. If you're setting all of this stuff from scratch, you can pretty much just follow my guide on how to do the full setup, but you can ignore the section where you have to calibrate the controllers. Check the card in the top right of your screen for that setup guide. But here, I'm just going to go over what is different from that previous video. First thing you need is the newest version of the PS Move FreePy Bridge. Once downloaded, just copy the files over your previous ones and that's all you need to do with this now. You'll also need to make sure you've updated to the latest PS Move Steam VR Bridge. Virtual controller support was added in version 1.3.0, so make sure you're at least at that or higher. If you're upgrading, make sure you run the reinstalled driver batch file. But if this is your first install, make sure you do the initial setup first, as stated in my main setup video. You're going to need to run the PS Move service once and then close it. This will create a new JSON in your app data folder called HMD Manager Config. You'll see it listed here. Once that's closed off, you can head over to the PS Move service folder in App Data. Open up that newly created JSON file and we'll just switch the virtual HMD to 1, then save and close. Now we'll open and close it one more time to create yet another JSON file. This new one is called Virtual HMD 0. In here, you'll only need to edit the bulb radius. 2.25 is the normal radius for the PS Move bulb and that's here by default. But if you're going to use a ping pong ball, then you'll need to switch to 2. If you're using something other than the PS Move bulb or a ping pong ball, measure what the radius of it is and enter it here in centimeters. Now we'll save that, we'll close it, and then we're going to reopen the PS Move service yet again. Once that's open, open up the config tool now. In here, you'll see that I have just one controller connected for the purposes of setting this up. And as mentioned before, if you are using this only for head tracking, you will still need this one controller for a part of the setup. From the main screen, click on HMD settings. In here, just select the color that closely resembles your head marker. In my case, I'm using a yellow LED inside the ping pong ball, so I'm going to select yellow. While you're here, take a quick note of what the ID of the HMD is. For me, it's zero. Now let's head over to tracker settings. In here, you'll want to calibrate HMD tracking colors. You'll need to calibrate each camera for the color you selected for the HMD. With the bulb lit, hold it in the middle of the room, then right click on the bulb while in RGB mode on each camera. Once you've right clicked each one, confirm it's visible without any kind of distortions while in mask mode. If you see any fuzziness or anything like that, you can always right click on it again to help clear things up. Once you've confirmed it looks good on all cameras, save and head back to the tracker settings. If you have previously done the compute tracker poses, you won't need to do this again. But if this is your first time setting it up, this is the part where you're going to need to use the borrowed or spare PS Move controller to compute the poses. 
details on how to do this are in my full setup guide. Now we can test the tracking of the HMD here in the config tool. You'll notice that it's always facing forwards, but that's all right since the rotation is taken care of by the phone or whatever else your HMD might have built in. Once you've confirmed everything working the way you want it to, this pretty much completes the PS Move service config and you'll no longer need that extra controller, unless of course you're going to use it for a hand controller. So now, when we start everything up, it's nearly the exact same as before in the previous setup video. Open the PS Move service, open up FreePie, run the example script, and now open up the PS Move FreePie bridge. Here, you'll need to type 1 to tell it to track an HMD. Then type 0, which is the ID of the HMD that we saw earlier. Remember, if you've created an auto hotkey script for the setup, all you need to do is modify the numbers that are being punched in, and you should be good to go. Hopefully this video helped you out to get up and running. And as always, I'm always willing to help out, so if you have any questions or even suggestions, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a big thank you to Hipster Slots, Zellman, Chad, and everyone else who've helped put together the PS Move service. All of the people who have contributed to this project have done an incredible job, and I can't thank them enough for providing this software to us completely free of charge. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.